Super Mario, the lovable wacky plumber from the 80s who's been in and done just about everything a video game character can. Spin-off games, movies, TV shows, amusement parks, and every food product imaginable. Ever wanted to drink Mario? I, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you can do it. For such a popular character, arguably the most popular video game character to ever exist, you think that even in the slightest amount, Mario would have some sort of appearance in the horror genre? And I mean, uh, sort of. The closest official appearance of horror in the Mario franchise would probably have to be the Luigi's Mansion games. Now, while I don't think this classifies as horror, more of a creepy and sort of spooky tone if anything, it's probably the closest we've ever gotten to an actual Mario horror game. And I mean, it makes sense. It's supposed to be a family franchise, so they don't want to show you Luigi yeah, oh. being shot in the head. The franchise doesn't really have any presence at all in the horror medium, but that's only officially. That's right, today we're going to be talking about horror fan games once again, but this time, we're talking about the funny red man. Now there are a lot of Mario horror fan games and not a whole lot of time to cover them all. There's a couple ones I'll be leaving out such as the iconic I Hate You, which is a classic creepypasta game about Luigi, well, uh, really wanting Mario dead. I mean, this guy is out for blood. Also the game Super Mario Dolor, which was a 3D Mario platformer that looked normal enough, well, normal might be an overstatement, until it takes a sharp right turn and goes full blood fest. Unfortunately, Nintendo likes to purge fan games every now and then and this game was caught in the band wave, a moment of silence for the big gray Mario head in the sky. Anyway, similar to the Spongebob video I did back in October, I'm gonna narrow down to only talking about five fan games. I tried my best to get a good variety of game types since a lot of current horror Mario games are just .exe games. Which there's really nothing wrong with that, but there's only so many times a man could play .exe games in his life, and guys, I'm starting to hit my limit. Without further ado, let's start this list off with one that's fairly known by the community, simply titled Mario. I actually had a nightmare about this game when I was like 11 or 12. I think it was this image right here that did it for me. Mario was a ROM hack of Super Mario World made by Adam. If you don't know what a ROM hack is, basically it's a modded version of an existing game and it's ROM file. In this case, it's the ROM for Super Mario World. Anyways, this game is from a classic creepypasta, basically a story about a guy on the SMW Central forum finding this ROM hack, playing it, and all sorts of scary yeah. silly oh. things happen. A game was also made to accompany the story. Will it still hold up as a scary experience? Well, I probably won't have another nightmare, that's for sure. Er, right? You boot up the game and it is indeed called Mario. When you go to the first level, immediately something is off, but it's something pretty small that you might miss at first glance or if you've never played Mario World before. The beginning of the message says that Mario is up to something, not Bowser. Anyways, the gameplay is, uh, well, it's just Super Mario World, so there's really no complaints here. It's, it's good. You traverse various levels, but with very odd level design that makes everything feel kind of barren. I still managed to die, though. You'll learn throughout the course of this video that I absolutely suck at Mario games. Some levels, however, are just nothing at all, like Yoshi World 7 where you just, uh, walk. There's also messages hidden throughout the game with these text boxes you can hit, giving you cryptic messages like, this is the selfish way out, and I hate you. Okay, that last one wasn't cryptic, that's just mean man, come on. I will say the atmosphere in this game is pretty unsettling. There's no horror elements that are like in your face, there's no blood, there's no cheap jump scare, just weird ass levels that have mysterious messages, and you've got no clue what's going on. On. Anyways, once you get past the regular empty levels previously mentioned, you get to the boss level, which is a castle called Go Back. You mostly just run straight and hit some text boxes that either tell you that you've done enough, or text boxes where Yoshi accidentally hits send before he even typed anything. Once you reach the end, you walk an invisible bridge to the final boss, one of the Koopalings. The boss fight is normal, but after you defeat him, you blow up the castle like normal, and you get a description of what seems to be a murder victim. Very gruesome detail, I assure you, but I think it's hilarious how this cheery ass music plays during this while the jumping egg thanks you. The final level in this game just has you walk a bunch and then you melt into the ground. I don't know if this is like a metaphor for Mario dying or maybe he just clipped into the back rooms, I have no clue. And that's the end, I actually really liked this game. It was a decent length and it was fun trying to figure out what the hell was going on, e even if I haven't yet. Oh also, there's a text file that's in the game files that when you convert it to an image just shows you this lovely face. Yep, nightmares are coming back. Moving on. 
Crucius Mortem is a creepypasta game made by White Void, who did another famous Mario creepypasta game called Left Behind, which didn't quite make the cut of this video, but it was also a fairly well-made game. Now I know what you're wondering, what does Crucius Mortem mean? Now according to Google Translate, it means death on the cross in Latin? Holy shit! are we gonna see Luigi be crucified? I have to play this game. The game takes place on a fake virtual desktop using an operating system called Syst OS. I think it's cool, but besides looking cool, it doesn't really have much of a function other than booting up a fake emulator. You can use the power button, guess what that does? You boot up the emulator and you open Super Mario Bros 2, but it's a tad glitchy this time and you can only choose Luigi. Oh well, I think I'm still gonna choose Mario. Okay, okay, I'll pick Luigi, I'll pick Luigi, Jesus Christ. <laughs> After that little hiccup, you begin to travel across the first Mario 2 stage, except the music is kind of messed up, the graphics are kind of really messed up, and the hand of God comes out of nowhere to crush Luigi and crash the game. Well, it turns out that the hand actually belonged to Mario, who appears in this awesome custom sprite art cutscene. I lied, by the way, that's not even Mario, but it's not important right now. We gotta play Super Mario Bros. 2! You make it through this dark grass and cave level until you get stopped by a voice asking who you are and eventually wanting them to give you their best welcome. Oh boy, I can't wait! Alright, maybe it was important that that wasn't Mario. Anyways, he crushes Luigi and my man is in very bad shape. The fake emulator crashes, which leads you to reboot the game where you now have to escape this cave that you're chained up to. While you're leaving the cave, you could pick up one of these turnips, which looks like the crying child from FNAF and does absolutely nothing. You hit the end of the cave and you find... No, 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 no. Oh, no! I'm gonna get whoever did this to you, man, don't worry. Well, it actually turns out that the dead toad was a fake out because after you grab the key he had on him, the toad turns into this crazy hand monster that begins to chase you out of the cave. You manage to trap him and continue onwards. The voice returns, it tells you that they changed toad for the better and he is quote, a pain in the ass. After this, the game ends, as this was just a demo for more to come. And I won't lie, this had to be one of the cooler creepypasta games I've played. Maybe because I'm a sucker for cool sprite art, but the monotone colors and kind of grungy look to all the sprites were pretty sick. It's not flawless, the gameplay isn't stellar, but I mean that goes for most creepypasta games, and they do rely on jump scares for some of the toad scenes, but I think that's fine. Overall, I did enjoy my time with this game, and hey, since we're on the topic of EXE games, may as well cover another one, and this time, Mario is fucking built. Mario 85, also known as Mario PC Port, is a short creepypasta game made by the group Taco Games. Now, this one is actually pretty well known, in part due to the Friday Night Funkin' community. I am so sad that I've mentioned FNF two videos in a row now. Anyways, I believe that this game was inspired by the Sonic PC Port, which was a pretty cool reimagining of the original Sonic.exe game, and I can safely say that this game is also cool. I, I think. You play as Luigi, which is a trend I've noticed in these games. Poor Luigi doesn't get a break, man. You go through the classic 1-1 level from the original Super Mario Bros, where the game keeps referring to you as Lucas, which just isn't my name. Seems like a massive oversight from the creator. I'll just fix it for him, don't you worry. Eventually, you get to the end of the level where this beast of a Mario punches a toad right in half and proceeds to chase you back to the beginning. I won't lie, I died like 20 times trying to do this. I don't know if this was difficult or once again, I just suck at Mario games. Could be either one. Also, while Mario is chasing you, he does like a fake out death where it looks like he falls and dies, but he just hops out with a hearty wahoo. I thought that part was pretty cool. Once you reach the end of the level, you enter a pipe or you could do what I did and die right at the end, but still enter the pipe somehow. This enacts a cutscene where big Mario basically just says he had fun with you and it leaves you on this end screen for the demo. Although it was short and only a demo, I kind of liked it. I can see how it got a following online. The design for the Mario creature is really well done. It's crazy to me though that he's in the game for like what, a minute and he still got like a million Friday Night Funkin' mods for him. Well, I want to do that. Here's my character, uh, Plimbo Glumpington. Now where's my game banana page? The next game is probably the least well-known one on this list, at least in my opinion, and it's called The uh, that's it, it's called the, there's nothing else to it. There's an apostrophe at the beginning, but that doesn't really do anything. 
The, also known as Coronation Day, is another Mario World ROM hack made by Medic, Torchcast, and Underway on the Super Mario World Central forum. This one is definitely interesting, as while it is sort of a creepypasta game, it differs in form factor from the other games I've talked about, and I love it for that. It's weird, creepy, and it has a hell of a title. So as soon as you start up the game, you're immediately hit with a screen that just says again as you're thrust into an empty world map, and then a barren level in a foggy forest. No UI, no lives, no power-ups, there's nothing. You just walk through this very normal forest with no evil Princess Peaches lurking around. Okay, maybe there's one. The gameplay is pretty similar to other Mario Creepypasta games where you just walk right, but in this game, I can kind of excuse it because of the other factors that are present. The music complements the setting perfectly. There's none at first, but some eerie and kind of melodic music starts to play as you get to the end of some of the levels. The sound effects also add to the setting, as the jump is very echoey, amplifying the desolate level you're walking through. Also, the sprites are pretty well done, and I know I say that for every game, but I can't help it. Mario horror sprite artists are talented as f***. After walking for a while and receiving some messages telling you to kindly leave and that you're just a husk of a human being, you reach a black screen which contains scrolling text claiming that they are indeed the god of this forest. Honestly, I hate when I'm taking a walk in my local forest and I just come across the giant black box in the middle of the road. Surely, nothing could be worse than that. Alright, it got worse. A chase scene starts, and this is where the game splits off into two different endings. I'll cover one at a time. If you die to Peach in this chase scene and don't make it to the end, the game seems to reset. However, it's obvious very fast that it's not the same. The sky is gray, little Marios are running amok, and you have to enter a few doors. This leads you to this underwater void where voices talking to you, kind of wondering who you are, and then a Mario ghost just stares at you until you have to reset again. Now, that's just the first ending, but what happens if I don't suck at at Mario games. If you manage to escape Peach and her uh, weird ass head minions in the horrifying glitch force, you're sent to this heart dimension that thanks you and calls you a king? There's gotta be some sort of story here, I swear. It seems to then flash back to Princess Peach exploring the forest with those dino guys from Mario World roaming around. The forest does not seem to like that you stomp on the dinos because then it accuses you of smelling red and being a good crop. Once again, the hidden story here's gotta be insane, right? You get to the end where there's a dark pit and Peach just promptly hops into it. The game restarts again with some banger music and some dialogue that leads to Mario hitting the end of the level where Peach died and staring at a pool of blood. Okay, this is the last time I say this, but this story has to be the craziest sh** to ever hit this world. If only I could understand it. Now that was the. Now I think there might be more secrets to this game. I'm like 80% sure I got everything done, but if I didn't, please yell at me in the comments. I really like this game, even if the story was kind of hard to follow. The music and level designs were perfectly matched, and although I wasn't terrified by the game, it definitely perfected a creepy atmosphere that I think it was trying to go for. There's a lot to this game, including a lot that I probably didn't cover in this video, so I really recommend you all just go check it out and play it for yourself. On to the last game, and do you want to know why this one's my favorite? Because you can punch Toad out of existence. Now is that f***ed up of me for doing since I'm Toad Bup? Probably, but I mean, too late now. The last game on this list is Another Princess is in Our Castle, a Super Mario 64 inspired horror game created by CM9 Animation. Now Mario 64 doesn't get a whole lot of horror games made about it. I mean, there was that whole Mario personalized trend, but that was more for videos rather than games. Not really knowing what it was, I went in with decent expectations and honestly, I had fun. After choosing a difficulty, you're spawned into the courtyard of Peach's castle as Mario, but in first person. After entering the castle, you notice that all the doors are boarded shut except for one. You enter the room, grab a lamp, and this is where the game gets wacky. The gameplay uses the Slender Man formula. You grab five items, in this case it's souls of the Mario 64 bosses, and try to escape the castle. However, the Slender Man formula is used to great effect here. The main boss here is a ghost peach who is roaming around the building and will hear you if you do almost anything. If you get caught, you get a big old smooch from Sharp Tooth Joe over here. There's also a number of toads that will roam the building, who if they find you, they just alert Peach to your location and face hug your screen until you slam it into the ground. The number of toads depends on the difficulty you're chosen. In this case, there's two toads. 
If Peach or a Toad is coming, you could hide inside of these chests placed around the rooms to avoid being seen. You also have a stamina bar, so you can book it if you need to. And that's all there really is to the gameplay. You just have to develop strategies to avoid being caught and try to get all five souls. Once you get all five souls, you can go into a room and grab a key in which you can attempt to escape. This game was actually pretty challenging at first. The enemies don't really have a solid pattern in where they go. Sometimes it seemed like they might have, but then all of a sudden they'll just decide to enter your room twice because why the f*** not? Peach can also face through walls and doors, so you don't really hear a door opening or a toad babbling when she's nearby. She's much quieter than the other enemies. The strategy that I found works best is to just speed run the entire game. As soon as I grabbed the lamp, I would just turn around and book it over the railing before Peach could even spawn in and grab three souls in a row without using all of my stamina. This would leave you with only two souls left, but they were on opposite sides of the map. But as long as Peach wasn't nearby, you could just tank through most of the toads and then hide in a chest before Peach gets to you. It took me about an hour to beat this game on a high medium difficulty, and when you finally do beat the game by getting the key, you just get jump scared. Now, at first I thought the game just hated my f***ing guts and Peach killed me at the last second, but nah, that's just how the game ends. And that was the game. Now I could go back and beat that game on harder difficulties, but I could also just stare at my empty desktop for a few hours instead, I get about as much done. I had a lot of fun playing this game, especially in a call with my friends yelling when Whenever I juked out an enemy or died out of nowhere. It's also really nice to see a Mario horror game that isn't a typical 2D platformer creepypasta game. I want to see more games like this. Could we get a Mario's Game Gallery horror game? Only time will tell. Mario horror fan games truly are an interesting genre. I'll be keeping a close eye on any future releases. None of them really left me scared to say the least, but that goes for a lot of horror games, so it's subjective really. I did have fun playing these games, and honestly, I wouldn't mind playing some more in the future. Sure. Except for EXE games. I'm done with those. Yeah. Oh, hold on. They made a Goku EXE game? <laughs> well, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm sold.